so good evening everyone uh, my name is ca khyati shukla and uh, just before we start i'd like to introduce myself a bit so i'm from the uh, icsc 2012 batch of gundecha and uh, i graduated from narsi monji college in 2017 and i became a chartered accountant in 2018 i have done my article ship uh, from deloitte haskins and sells and then post my qualification i joined uh, deloitte as a deputy manager and i'm currently in that function itself uh, so i'm the statutory audit department uh, other than my professional career i like watching movies i like shopping and i like traveling so before i just get on to the session i'd like to know from you all that what do you all know about the chartered accountancy course or what comes to your mind when i say the word ca so just for a bit of uh, people can unmute themselves and tell me how much they know about the course or what comes to their mind when they uh, get to know about chartered accountants um hi actually i'm studying for ca foundation for may 2022 attempt hi what's your name i'm sakshi masalia Hi Sakshi. So tell me, what what comes to your mind when you talk about a CA or becoming a CA? It's all about auditing, taxation, and all of that. Looking through right. people's accounts. True. Anyone else? I see Bhutan yeah, has raised his hand. Yeah, I think my chartered accountant. What I can figure is that you know, uh, it is basically someone who. Uh, is a professional ac accounting and is recognized by some uh, organization. That is why it's called chartered, I believe. So I think there's sure. ICA, Inter Indian Chartered Accountants Association, or something like that, which recognizes. ICA, yes. Right. right. Many of my friends are doing that. So uh, I think it's all you know, taxation, accounting of your businesses, of your firms, or even if you know, if you're self-employed, well, everyone has sure. to file taxes. So I, I think <laughs> right. CAs do that job perfectly, and uh, just in yesterday's session for entrepreneurship, uh, one of our speakers was mentioning. One of our speakers was a CA, and okay. he was talking to us about how difficult it is and how amazing. Like the better CA you have, the more you earn <laughs> and the less you pay in taxes. That's how you know you basically legally avoid paying taxes. True. So it's a quite a tough job, I believe, and <laughs> one which is very important. Great. Anyone else? Okay, so no worries. I'll start uh, with uh, a bit about the course and uh, how does the CA uh, course curriculum go about? Is my screen visible to everyone? Oh uh, yes, it's visible. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So first, when I talk about uh, a chartered accountancy examination, so the levels that uh, you have to go through before you become a chartered accountant uh, are as follows. Now, first, uh, as Sakshi was also mentioning, that uh, CA Foundation. CA Foundation is the entrance level examination. Uh, it occurs twice a year. So all the CA examinations basically occur twice a year in somewhere in May June and the other is in November. Uh, foundation has four subjects. Then comes the second level that is intermediate. Again twice a year, eight subjects. Then okay after intermediate and before you go to your final CA phase, there is a very important phase in the chartered accountancy curriculum which is called the article ship phase, where you actually experience what your life would be when you do the work of a chartered accountant. so that is one very added advantage of this course that is you have to do a compulsory 3 year article ship article ship is nothing but an internship of sorts so we'll get into the details of it later on but uh, it involves a 3 year compulsory internship and only then can you uh, become a ca after clearing your ca final examination now uh, the thing is with a lot of uh, other uh, career opportunities that we see or entrance exams the most important part is clearing the entrance examination and once you are in uh, you are set to become uh, whatever uh, accounting or professional uh, degree you choose however uh, in ca that is not the case it is exactly the opposite the level you skip or the level you elevate yourself to it gets tougher so it's a pyramid 
there are a lot of people at foundation, then lesser at intermediate, and then a fewer at CFIMO. So it becomes a pyramid of sorts. Now, if I talk about CA Foundation. Now, CA Foundation is, uh, I would say, a quite simpler examination. Uh, it has four subjects, accounts, maths, economics, and business law. Now, uh, when I gave my CA Foundation exam, it was called CPT. I gave it in 2014. And uh, the good part about that examination was that it was completely MCQs. So all the four subjects, we had MCQs. However, now with CA Foundation coming up, this MCQ system has been uh, restricted to only two subjects, that is maths and economics. So law and accounts are still objective, uh, subjective types. They do not have MCQs. Now, uh, when I talk about foundation and the paper pattern, how it goes, is all these papers are at uh, an alternate days. And they are 100 marks. So uh, 100 marks of accounts, hundreds of maths, economics, and then business law. Now, in that, those 100 marks where there is a subjective type of question, it becomes quite simple. But when you come to objective, where there are MCQs, there is negative marking. So basically, if there are 100 marks of MCQs, for every right answer you give, you get one mark. But for every wrong answer you give, you lose 1.25 marks. So there is a negative marking of 0.25 in foundation. Another thing uh, that you need to do, like when you have to clear foundation, you need to get a minimum of 40% in each of these subjects. And not just 40% in each of them, you overall also have to get 50%. Uh, so what I mean by this is, if you get 40 in accounts, 40 in maths, 40 in economics, 40 in law, great, you've cleared all. But you do not clear foundation because you need a minimum of 200. That is 50% of 400. And even if you get like less than 40 in one of them, but you have got a total of more than 200, you still won't be able to clear the foundation examination. So it is an and criteria and not an or criteria. That is, you need to get 40% in each subject and 50% on a totality basis. So this is foundation. Now, uh, foundation examinations, they uh, usually happen in June and uh, November, December phases. So it is up to you when you want to give it uh, foundation you will give after you clear your 12th. So once you clear your 12th, you have to opt for a foundation examination to enter the CA course. Now uh, going to intermediate, that is the next level. Now once you've cleared your CA foundation examination, you uh, got your marks and everything, you move to the next level that is intermediate CA. So this you will do with your graduation. Now, one thing I'd like to uh, highlight here, that CA and your graduation are two completely different things. I'll come to the point of uh, how you can cover your graduation while you do your CA, but CA is completely different from graduation. So this is just, we're talking about the CA portion right now. Your graduation will be a different piece altogether. So then, now when I talk about my intermediate level or the level two, it gets a bit more tough than foundation. There are eight subjects here. So we have accounts, we have law, we have taxation, cost accounts, advanced accounts, audit, ITSM, and finance. Now, if I'm just to give you a brief about what these subjects entail. So accounts, uh, I think uh, if you all know, so accounts is basically uh, any company, if you would have seen all those big companies, l &T, HDFC, these big companies, they have to publish their accounts. And when I say publish their accounts, it means a basic of a balance sheet and a profit and loss account. That is what they have done throughout the year, how they have used the people's money throughout the year that they present in their accounts. Now that accounts is basically what you have to learn to make in the accounting subject, a very basic idea. Corporate law, on the other hand, is basically what are the laws that regulate these entities in our corporate world. So every company will have certain laws that is the Companies Act that will regulate that entity. It has to follow what is written in the law. So that is mainly what entails in the corporate law bit. Taxation at an intermediate level, you have both the taxation that is direct tax and indirect tax. Now, uh, when I say direct tax and indirect tax, it's as simple as when I'm earning money and I pay tax on the money I earn, it's called direct tax. But when I buy something, like you guys would be doing online shopping or something, you pay GST. That's an indirect tax. You are paying the tax for consumption. 
So both these portions, direct as well as indirect, are covered at the intermediate level in one paper itself of 100 marks. Then going to cost accounts. Now, what is cost accounts? Uh, cost accounts will be as simple as now accounting is regulated by certain uh, entities or uh, rather as uh, even Guru was mentioning earlier, ICAI that regulates chartered accountants. It also regulates the accounting of the entities. However, it is not necessary that if I'm a company, my method of analyzing my business will be different from how the law requires me to do. So for that, you need cost accountants who will understand the business and then give you uh, basic ideas about the business. Like suppose as simple as it's a manufacturing company, the cost accountant will look at Mujhe ek product banane ke liye kitna paisa lag hai. what all costs I will include in that. Something as simple as that is cost accounting using your business acumen to uh, derive accounts. Then going to advanced accounts. Now accounts and advanced accounts are both a uh, very common subject or rather uh, they have a lot of common in them. However, it's just certain advanced level accountings like uh, if I am a company, uh, the accounts will come in accounts. But my company has 10 subsidiaries. Subsidiaries means I invested in certain companies. So I have 10 different companies which I have invested in. Together with those 10 subsidiaries, I am called a group. So as a group, how I will account? This will be in advanced accounting. Then going to audit. Audit is something what I do, a part of it that is statutory audit. Now audit again is of two types. There are some audits which the government requires every entity to do. Because uh, rather why would a government want an entity to be audited? It's very simple. Like if today you are investing money in a particular share, say suppose l &T, you bought the shares of l &T, That means you're giving the company some money. You would like to know where that money is being used by the company and whether your money is being misutilized or not. That is where the auditors or the statutory auditors come into picture. They give you an assurance that, okay, no, your money is being put to good use. The financials of the company are good. They are not misutilizing your money. So that is the simple job of a statutory accountant. That is, they're supposed to give you assurance that your money is not getting wasted. The other type of audit is internal audit. That is something which the law does not require you to do, but the companies want to know what is happening within the company. Like someone as a CEO will not have a complete background of what is happening at every nook and corner of the company. He would want to know whether what all money he is putting into the business is being put to correct use. So that is where internal audit comes into picture. Both these types of audits will be covered under this subject. IT and SM, uh, I would say rather a very, it is a very theoretical subject. Uh, it will talk about basically computers, how uh, like every company to record their accounts, they will use some system, something as basic as tally. So how do you audit in an IT environment is basically what the IT sub subject considers, IT and strategic management. And the next is finance. Now, uh, looking at something from an accounting perspective is completely different from finance. Finance is all about money. I put in this much money. What is the value of that money today? That is basically finance. How am I supposed to get money for, to do my business? That is finance. So that is what the finance topic entails. This is about intermediate CA. Now, the portion of intermediate CA, so all the papers are 100 marks. They will be at an uh, alternate day uh, interval. And uh, with that, there are some papers which have an option uh, which have 30 marks of MCQs in them. Now, uh, these are law, taxation, audit, and ITSM. They have 30 marks of MCQs, 70 will be theoretical. Rest all 100 marks theory. You actually have to write down all the answers. There are no MCQs. However, in these cases where the four ticks you can see, where there are MCQs, there will be no negative marking. So basically, it does not matter if you give the wrong answer also. It's worth taking the risk. Now, uh, what happens in intermediate CA is again, there are the eight subjects are divided into two groups. The ones you see here in one color, that is group one. The other four are form under group two. So CA intermediate gives you an option basically that you can either give one group at a time or you can give both the groups at a time. If the criteria remains the same, 40% in each and 50% in one group you need now. 
so you need 40 40 40 40 but your total of these should be more than 200 that is 50 percent of 400 similarly 40 40 40 40 and the total should be more than 200 however there is one another concept that comes into play here which is called set off so suppose in group one you get 210 and in group two you just get 190 so even though your group two total is less than 200 you can set off this 10 additional marks that you get in group one in group two so that is the concept of set off however individually you have to get more than 40 percent in every subject so this is intermediate ca uh, now intermediate ca that you will do you will do uh, along with your uh, college graduation first year that will follow you will go to your classes and in addition you will be preparing for the intermediate ca examination now this exam again happens twice a year november and in uh, may so you have two attempts to give this examination now once you clear your ca examination the next step comes is article show however you need to know what you need to know is that even if you clear the first group you can start your article ship and then give the group two However, if you clear group two, but not the group one, you cannot start with your article ship. You need to clear group one and then you can begin with your article ship. Now, article ship. This is the best phase of the entire CA curriculum. This is three years of actual practical experience that you would be gaining when uh, you work at any kind of a firm. Uh, do any of y'all have any idea what people do in article ships? Or have you heard stories about people that you might know who are doing article ship? Anyone? No, ma'am, no idea. Please don't call me, ma'am. Uh, you can call me Khyati. So this is the first rule actually that I learned in my article ship. Uh, even wherever, whichever company you go to, the rule is you do not call anyone ma'am or sir. You call them by their first names. This you will learn when you go to a CA firm or any kind of uh, place for your article ship. So what happens is uh, once you clear your group one, say suppose, or both the groups together, you clear uh, at an intermediate level. Then you go for your article ship. Now this is a very big decision, I would say, because it determines your career ahead, what you will do. I'm not saying that once you choose an article ship career, you cannot move to any other career after you clear. You definitely can. But trust me when I say this, article ship gives you an added advantage. If you excel in your article ship phase, you will definitely excel in your career ahead. Now, uh, article ship is as good as an internship. It's just a term for an internship. Like uh, for becoming a doctor, a person has to work under a doctor. Similarly, to become a CA, you need to work under a CA. That is simply article ship. So you will have to work in a CA firm. So it will be a group of chartered accountants. Now, CA firms are of three types. Small sized firms, mid sized firms and big four firms. Uh, can anyone name the big four firms? Big four chartered accountancy firms. Any idea? Tata Consultancy Services? No. So Tata Consultancy Services would come under an industry. KPMG. Four, right. KPMG is a big four firm. Do not worry. Even when I started... Uh, yes, correct. KPMG, even by Deloitte, right? PWC. Perfect. So these are the big four firms. KPMG, Deloitte, uh, EY, and uh, PWC. So even when I started my career uh, in CA, I had no idea what a big four firm is. So I just went into the uh, chartered accountancy course. And as uh, people started doing things, even I started following. What turned out to be lucky for me is I like what I do. So it's better to be aware right now of what you want to do. Small firms can be basically, uh, when I say small firms, small firms are basically uh, any firm which has two to three chartered accountants and they have their own firm and you work under them. Now, what happens in a small firm is there is no separate division 
that you will do audit or you will do tax or you will do direct tax filing or you will do indirect tax no you get an exposure of everything here so if at an article shift phase you're not sure of what you want to do small form can be a good option because you will get an exposure of everything that is the basic four areas audit uh, internal and statutory tax direct and indirect now mid size firms uh, as well as big four firms they are usually department specific now when i say department specific during your article ship these are the four options that you will get when you do your uh, article ship in any ca firm honestly uh, when you become a chartered accountant you realize that there are many more options but however during article ship these are the four major areas that you can do your article ship in i did my article ship in statutory audit function where i continued and i'm currently in the statutory audit function itself so uh, when i say audit as i was explaining statutory audit is something which is required by law and you have to check basically what the companies where other people have invested are doing their accounting correctly or not that is your job as a statutory auditor internal audit uh, is of great importance in financial services like banks where the systems are so complex that they need to have their own set of controls idhar ka paisa udhar nahi ja sakta you cannot afford to do that so that is why internal audit comes uh, into picture there so basically when you are in internal audit what you will be doing uh, is basically suppose in a bank you are doing an internal uh, you are doing the internal audit of a bank you will check what all are the risk a bank will have and what all are the controls they have to mitigate those risks and if you find a loophole that okay there is one risk but they do not have a mitigating control that is where your function will come into picture and you will give them suggestions that this is what they are supposed to do internal auditor gives suggestions statutory auditor gives compulsions you cannot deny what the statutory auditor wants you to do because otherwise it's very simple they will give out a report stating that your accounts are not proper and that report gets published everywhere so that is why these big companies like lnt or hdfc bank or any kind of big big companies they have to get a report which does not uh, have a qualified opinion that we say that is basically everything is proper they have to state otherwise people won't invest in their uh, company moving on to the tax function now tax function direct tax uh, of course a lot of people will tell you that in direct tax it's only tax filing and uh, of course uh, this is there's one picture that comes to your mind when never you think about a ca is filing of taxes tax evasion but trust me when i say this being a chartered accountant myself i am not an expert in tax i am an expert only in my area of statutory audit i do not know a lot about tax of course i know a few things but not maybe sufficient uh, to be called as an expert in taxation so if you want to become an expert in taxation you get into direct tax direct tax is basically as i said the income tax portion if i am earning i pay tax on it that is my direct tax if you want to become something uh, in that area you should uh, do your article ship in direct tax now it will not only involve uh, filing the tax returns of your clients but it will also include suppose uh, the income tax department has said that your client needs to pay a certain amount of tax but you after reading the laws you realize that no okay there is one loophole the income tax uh, department is saying incorrectly you go for a litigation for your client even that function is done by the direct tax departments where they fight for their client they cite cases from the uh, tax laws and they fight for their client that no my client will not pay this tax because as per the income tax act if you read it correctly this is what it means so basically contesting against the department is also a function of the direct tax <coughs> now uh, going to indirect tax so honestly when i started my article ship uh, in indirect tax what we had was vat service tax and all those uh, areas gst had not been implemented when i was doing my article ship so uh, as a ca i saw that transformation from uh, vat and all those other small small indirect, indirect taxes to just one indirect tax which is now prominent gst and that is where every time a new law is introduced where companies are supposed to know have some expert opinion a ca will come into picture so that is where the demand for this field uh, increased because still in the market there are not many people who know a lot about gst it's still fresh so basically when uh, you do indirect tax you will be doing everything regarding the gst compliances of your client 
any company which is required to pay gst you will be looking at their compliances <coughs> now uh, when you talk about article ship a few things uh, that i would like to mention here is if you choose a particular field and uh, say after a few months you realize okay no i'm not enjoying the work i don't like this field you can take a shift up to one year of your article ship there is a cap of one year after you complete one year you cannot opt for a transfer but up to one year you can change your article ship form so if you realize in six months that you go for stat audit you realize okay i'm not liking it it's not a good work i want to do something else or i like tax more i want to try tax or if you say suppose you go to a big four firm but you realize okay no i'm not getting time for my studies i'm not able to uh, enjoy my life i i want to have a firm where i get exposure of everything i want to move to a small size firm you can do up to a period of one year before you complete one year in your article ship you can make a switch however uh, what happens is if you join a small firm and then you decide you want to big, move to a big four uh the problem that happens is big four firms usually i would say usually not all the time do not take transfer cases but if you have a good contact then you can definitely consider some of you uh, even if you all want to uh, opt for any big four firms in the future you all can definitely reach out to me i can help you all with something like that but if you want to make the shift from a small four uh, small firm to a big four firm it becomes slightly difficult uh, to take a transfer mid size firms again so it's easy now what happens is if you completed one year but you did not take a transfer you are in the second year of your article ship that is when you realize okay no i am not liking the work that i do i do not want to do this work the ca curriculum offers you another option which is called industrial training <coughs> what is industrial training now whatever work i right now mentioned you were working for a particular client that is uh, you were doing the audit of lnt or uh, you were doing the internal audit of some bank you were looking at the direct tax compliance of some client now this is basically you're on the other side that is the consulting side now industrial training is basically going to the client side and working for the client not providing services through consulting but directly on the payroll of that client so if you if you want to work for lnt not as a client not lnt being a client but you want to work for lnt as a company like someone mentioned tata consultancy services that is called an industry so if you want to work for tata consultancy services what option you have is after you complete 2 years of your article ship you can go for industrial training that is you can go here and uh, you can do a job at some company like tata consultancy services lnt what you will be doing there will you will have a variety of options actually depends on the company you choose but majorly if i am to tell you uh, you will be doing either accounting of that company you will be doing certain taxing of uh, taxation bit of that company or you could get into something like uh, analytical skills managing the finance of that company but as a trainee see you will be joining some company that option is available after the second year uh now honestly to give you a, a reason uh, as to why I, i personally would say that industrial training is not a good option what happens is in the ca curriculum the article ship is 3 years now before you complete your article ship you will be a ca if you clear on the first attempt before you complete your article ship you will be a ca so that phase of 6 months where you actually have to give your ca final examination will fall in that period of 3 years of article ship so basically that 6 months where you study and give the give your examination is a part of the 3 years of article ship now every firm will have certain criteria for giving you leaves for your examination honestly when you are doing your article ship your priority ultimately is going to be your ca final examination so uh, the first day you enter into your article ship the thought will be okay how many leaves am i going to get for preparing for my examination usually big four firms from my experience they give up to 6 months of leaves which is the highest mid size and small firms give up to 4 and 5 months of leave however industrial trainings where you go to they give you not more than usually 3 months of leave though i would say the uh, amount that they pay you that is the stipend is higher but your final ca leaves will be lower so choose wisely when you go for an industrial training or something like that 
now uh, certain things when people do article ship uh, first people ask me uh, whether doing dummy article ship is a good idea now what is a dummy article ship is uh, i cleared my intermediate suppose and uh, i don't want to get into this article ship thing i just want ca for a heck of a degree i don't want to do uh, the article ship of 3 years i uh, have uh, my dad whose friend is a chartered accountant and he has his own firm so i tell my dad that please talk to your friend and uh, ask him to register me under himself for 3 years and pay me some stipend 5000 which i'll return to him later on so that is basically doing dummy article ship you do not actually go to the firm but you just are registered under a ca on paper i would strongly suggest that none of you all do that because trust me uh, as tough as it is to do article ship it is a wonderful experience and it builds your career now uh, when you do your article ship uh, i'll just give you a hint of how your day will look like so once you've cleared your cf uh, ex uh, intermediate examination uh, say suppose you join a college which requires you to compulsorily attend 75% attendance is compulsory so i i went to nursery monji college where they, we had an attendance compulsion so how my uh, usual day uh, looked like uh, i'm talking about monday to friday so my college would be at 7 am in the morning i stayed at borivli and my college was at parla so i would wake up at 5 i would leave my house at 6 i would reach the college at 7 uh, i had 7 to 10 or sometimes 11 college and then my article ship uh, i did my article ship from deloitte itself which is a big four firm and uh, we had to start by 11 11:30 so then 10 o'clock i would leave from my college i'd go to the place where i have to go for my article ship so it was usually at lower parel so i travel and i go to lower parel i reach there by 11 now uh, once i reach there by 11 if you are doing uh, the article ship in a big four firm or even in certain mid size firms there is no guarantee of the time limit up to which you have to do uh, the article ship what i mean is uh, usually the timings are 11 to 6:30 but uh, if certain firms in fact certain small firms also there are peak periods like somewhere uh, 10 clients come together you have to manage a lot of work so usually my hours would go from 11 to 9 in the night 9 o'clock i leave from my office i reach home by 10 10:30 i eat something i just go off to sleep next day the entire schedule repeats itself this happens till friday and uh, then saturday sundays uh, of course uh, we should not forget that uh, my ultimate aim of doing the article ship is to give the ca final examination and crack it so i have classes over the weekend so saturday sunday i would either have classes from 7 to 2 or uh, 3 to 9 7 to 2 in the morning or 3 to 9 in the afternoon so if it's in the afternoon then uh, great uh, my first half would go in sleeping and uh, if it's in the first half of the day my uh, classes then in that case my second half would either go in going out or doing some kind of uh, activity which i actually like so i would say one thing that yes article ship phase will be very tough you will not have much time but the thing is with the entire ca curriculum you will never have time and uh, not just right now or not just while you are studying even after you do uh, your ca you will not have time and i feel it's not just with ca it's with a lot of professions that you might not have time the point here is you need to take out time for things that are important to you trust me when i say this you can clear this examination you can become a chartered accountant only if you continue to do what you like because if you burn out yourself at the start itself then it becomes very difficult to uh, do a course which is this long this is a five year course you cannot expect yourself to be working hard for all the five, uh, days in five years so make sure you take out time for yourself article ship uh, gives you experiences in the form uh, of i'd say okay imagine a 19 year old person a girl or a boy 19 year old girl or a boy not knowing anything straight from college who still going to college rather being put into a big four consulting firm huge walls partners with 30 years of experience i'd say one thing uh, when i did my article ship from the big four firm one thing that i realized it is that uh, before i joined the course i had no idea what a big four firm is but uh, once i went into it uh, i started hearing things about big four firms and uh, somewhere i didn't know whether i wanted it or not uh, but then one day at my college uh, the big four firms came for an interview 
uh, all the big four came for an interview in internal audit and statutory audit department it is only when i got rejected at the internal audit interview i realized that how much i wanted to go for a big four firm you do not realize those things and honestly being very honest with you guys i had no idea what a big four firm does what i'm getting into i just wanted to get into it the good part is it turned out well for me so uh, i would however suggest that before you get into something it's better you take a complete understanding of it however we had another interview for this department i cleared this interview and uh, in god's grace i'm still in this department and i enjoy my work so you might get lucky uh, but you need to decide like soon enough to know what you want to do in your career article ship will help you decide that it is not necessary what you do in your article ship uh, you have to continue with that but it will definitely help you decide uh, on the contrary i would also say that uh, you will find myths saying that okay if you are doing article ship in a big four firm they are not going to take time for yourself they slog a lot uh, they do not have time to eat food they do not have time to prepare for exams trust me i did my article ship from big four firm that is not the case yes there are certain days in fact uh, there was one day uh, where i stayed uh, in my office for a stretch of 36 hours working but then there are days where i take leaves and they go unaccounted for nobody asks me because this is what the repo i had with my uh, colleagues over there so it's okay it's not that all days are going to be tough you will have tough days but then you will have better days as well and uh, what works well uh, in a big four firm is that basically you get that tag on your uh, cv so once you become a ca wherever you want to go be it any industry be it any kind of firm or you want to move abroad that name will help you go there so think about whether you want it or not for yourself before you decide anything so i would uh, in short suggest that article ship is the best phase of a ca uh, curriculum so enjoy it uh, the most take the most out of it to not think that i am not going to need it or uh, i just need this for a tag and not pay attention to that phase this is the best learning phase that you can have so make the most out of it now uh, once you have done two and a half years of your article ship you have to give your ca final examination not even two and a half years i would rather say or uh, two years and some two three months then you will break for your ca final leave from your article ship so say suppose you start your article ship uh, somewhere in september uh, so i started my article ship say suppose in september 2015 i took a break from my article ship uh, almost 2 years later that is uh, i did my article ship up to october 2017 and from november 2017 i went for my ca final leaves my examination was in may 2018 so i got a whole Six months to prepare for my examination. So even if you're not able to prepare for the examination during your article ship, you have college, you have uh, other things that you want to do. It's okay. You will have certain leaves, a uh, span of six months to prepare for the examination. Now the question whether the six months are enough, I'd say it varies from person to person. They were enough for me, and uh, when I say enough, I did not slog during this period. it's not like i uh, i studied hard for like 16 hours a day or something like that i cannot do that i'm not a computer to constantly be studying for 16 hours i took my breaks and i studied for a span of 6 months and that was enough for me to clear all the eight subjects in one go however as i again say it is a very personal thing you know yourself better and therefore uh, it is you who have to decide how much you need to start studying beforehand or how much you can uh, take a leave to study now ca final uh, subjects they are very much similar to your intermediate however they will be more detailed uh, accounts you will have a further advanced level of accounting uh, when it comes to accounts now accounts uh, when you talk about the ca final examination when i was giving my ca final examination uh, we had in accounting something that you called accounting standards now what happened is every company uh, every country will have its own set of rules regarding how to account something uh now globally what happens is now if there's one company which is in india and it has its branches say suppose in us as well it becomes very difficult for me to look at both the accounts and compare them because india is following its own set of rules for accounting us has its own set of rules for accounting 
say uh, london has its own set of rules for accounting so how do these become comparable so that is where something that came into picture was uh, international financial reporting standards as as they call it that is basically in simpler terms a global rule globally how the co companies should account so uh, when i was doing my article ship we started uh, with the base of accounting standard which were only accepted in india and in 2017 the government made it compulsory to use ifrs converged indian accounting standards that is in, in short nothing but the internationally accepted uh, rules so that is why uh, even i have not studied in fact the international standards uh, in my ca curriculum it is a practical experience that i have gained over the years uh, but however if you do the course now the international accounting standards are compulsory so again it helps you if you want to have an international presence so that is with accounts SFM is basically financial management, as I was referring to. That is basically how a company will manage its finances. When I say finances, so if I am the owner of the company, the money that I put in is equity. How much money that I will earn on my own investment? How much I will take as a loan from some other company to run my business? That ratio, maintaining that ratio, how much interest I should be paying? Those things are covered under strategic financial management, or SFM, as we call it. then uh, the th third subject that i was referring to audit same again statutory audit internal audit a theoretical subject law you will study various types of laws however the major focus in law will be on companies act that is basically all the companies in india they follow one act which is called the companies act 2013 and that will be your major area of focus in law costing again a logical subject basically as a businessman how you look at the costing of your own product is costing now uh, i will talk about the elective subjects a bit later on uh, i will give you a brief this is something new i did not have that option when i was giving but uh, i will tell you all what the electives are uh, in the later slide uh, direct tax again if i am earning the income i am paying tax there are certain rules the rate at which i am going to pay tax what income will be taxable those things come under direct tax one law or of the direct tax then indirect tax again uh, luckily again for you all there will be just one law that you all will be studying that is gst now uh, ca final when you talk about it is a completely different ball game like you've seen uh, ipcc or what i used to call it as ipcc now you all call it ca intermediate or foundation very easy or rather comparatively easy now when you do ca final the course is so vast that firstly let me warn you you are not going to be able to complete the entire 100% of the course and it's okay it's very normal it's very normal to not being able to study the entire course because it's not practically possible even though you study for 6 months you study for 3 years what happens in those 3 hours of examination will determine your result so that is very important uh i'll tell you my own personal experience now uh, i don't know if you all have heard uh, there is one thing which is very common uh, among cas uh, which happens is cas take a lot of attempts as it is said now uh, attempts is basically what happens usually in the ca final examination people are not able to clear in one go the number of people who clear in one go all the eight subjects are few as compared to uh, other uh, courses because firstly studying eight subjects giving eight examinations just after one day of each examination becomes very tough and secondly i would say that whether you clear the examination or not will not a lot depend on your intelligence or smartness trust me i have seen people who are extremely smart extremely intelligent even more smart uh, than what i am or i was or more intelligent than what i was but they failed to clear in the first attempt because there is one portion that none of us have control over when we give the ca final examination that is luck you might attempt a question uh, thinking that okay i know it midway you will realize that okay maybe there's something missing in the question some information is missing and you just leave the question and you think okay i just did not attempt a question of 16 marks i did not know the answer turns out the question was wrong so the in, uh, institute will give you full marks for the question however someone on the contrary would have uh, thought that okay this question seems wrong and attempted another question but they would have got just half the marks for the question and that is where your luck will come into picture luck plays a very important role in your ca final examination uh, on the other hand what another thing that is important is being uh, very persistent 
you cannot afford to have uh, studied for like uh, 16 hours for two months and then not studied at all for the uh, remaining two months you need to distribute it you need to plan it out with proper planning good amount of uh, calculated effort or taking calculated risk will help you clear this examination so when i gave my uh, ca final examination the first paper was accounts uh, luckily i was good at it and the paper was very easy i was very happy after the paper and i was like okay i don't know why people say ca final examinations are so tough this seems easy manageable i think i'll be able to manage the other exams as well going on to the next paper sfm i had no idea what the paper was about i was trying to solve the questions and i kind of went blank in between the paper and i just i think attempted like 60 70 marks out of 100 and i had no idea what was happening but uh, kind of the questions what i had studied for and what came in the exam was different i would not say uh, that they were out of syllabus trust me there is nothing in ca which is you call it out of syllabus nothing is out of syllabus everything is in the syllabus itself it just you did not study it so my paper went extremely bad by the time i reached home i was in tears uh, and i had another paper to prepare for uh, just after a day so i had no idea what to do i went home i cried i went off to sleep i woke up the next day trying to study for audit now what happened is your mind keeps playing that sfm paper kept playing in my mind and the entire day passed by but i was not able to study much in order so that is when it hit me that okay i have a paper tomorrow but i have not studied enough luckily for me since i had done my article ship in audit i was well versed with audit so i did not need much uh, kind of a preparation for it like i could write the examination but then i woke up early the next day prepared in the 7 8 hours that i had and went to give the examination and luckily audit went well for me then came law uh, so by the time it was law i was like okay again a new paper let me uh, start fresh i the law the problem was that the portion was huge and uh, so i had planned everything but something that did not work in my favor was my sleep uh, i had kept an alarm of say 4 o'clock in the morning and i kind of i think uh, snoozed it off or switched it off or i don't know something and i woke up at around 8 with a huge shock because i had only done 50% of my portion so that uh, i was a bit scared when i went to the examination because just doing the 50% portion and going to the examination did not uh, kind of work well for me but then i went to the examination i got the paper i started reading the paper firstly the paper was a 40 pages i was a bit in shock i had never seen such a paper and then i looked around nobody had any idea so at the end of the day i was a bit relieved that i'm glad at least i slept four hours extra because nobody has any idea what this paper is about so how much ever irrespective of the question they ask you need to know what you write you need to write what you know so i started writing and i gave this group after i came home i just realized that okay maybe the chances of me clearing this group are not very high so let me just focus on the second group because what happens is even if you don't clear one group and you clear the second group you do not have to give these four papers again but if you clear uh, say suppose seven subjects out of eight say you do not clear law but you have to give the entire group again so that is one thing about the ca uh, curriculum you have to clear it in a group you cannot clear individual papers so then i focused on the second group and gave my second group and luckily by the time the second group came to an end at least i was sure that okay i'm going to clear the second group what happened in uh, our time that when i was giving my attempt uh, in 2018 is that a lot of people did not give the after the sfm paper which was quite tough <coughs> did not give the other papers because okay i'm any which way swanking in sfm why do i give the other papers however i have seen that a few of those people who did not give that uh, other paper audit and law because sfm was bad cleared their sfm paper so you can imagine what that person might would uh, would have felt that because of one paper which i thought i will not clear i did not give the remaining two exams and for that now i have to give an entire group again so your mind ga- mind plays a lot of games with you when you are in that entire phase of giving the examination do not allow your thoughts to overpower rationality 
be rational if you you there might be days you want to actually cry but it's okay think rationally what you want to do and trust me at the end of all of this it is worth it when you clear all these examinations it is worth it when you get that tag uh, before your name it is definitely worth it so uh, then going to the electives now what all electives that you have okay before i go to the electives uh, we did not have this system but uh, now a new system has come in whereby uh, these papers where you can see a tick mark direct tax indirect tax audit and law have 30 marks of mcqs and these mcqs do not have any negative marking so these papers they will have 70% uh, or 70 marks of subjective and 30 marks of objectives so that is one good thing i feel now going to the ca final uh, electives now what all are the electives available uh, first is risk management any idea of what risk management would entail Uh, basically, financial risks, anything uh, to make sure that a company doesn't face any risk to prevent them, to foresee them. True. Correct. Uh, foreseeing risk uh, is exactly very important. As you rightly pointed out, it is basically in very simple terms, what all risk my company will face, what all are the controls that I can have in place to mitigate those risks. That is what you will have in risk management. Second is uh, FSCM, that is nothing but financial services and capital markets. Any idea of financial services and capital markets just from the plain reading of the words? Anyone? Okay, uh, so let me just uh, add something to it. It's very simple. Financial service now, a financial service sector is nothing but your banks. Banks come under financial services sector. So anything that you uh, do, this will basically completely be relating to banking. Capital market, on the other hand, is nothing but the stock market that you see, the shares that you invest in. And there are a lot of other forms of securities. Share is a type of security. There are other forms you might have heard of, uh, derivatives, debentures. This is what this subject entails. International taxation. Now, uh, international taxation is nothing but basically like you have a taxing system in India. There are certain taxes uh, abroad as well. Now, if you're earning foreign income, how it will be taxed, those things uh, is international taxation. Economic laws, uh, on the other hand, uh, like I was mentioning that uh, these companies, uh, basically whichever companies uh, are listed on the stock exchange, when I say listed, basically, uh, a common person like you and I can invest in that company to buying shares of those companies. Now, these companies are regulated by an organization called SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. SEBI has certain regulations that it has formed. So these all regulations will come under economic laws. GFRS is nothing but global financial reporting standards. Now, uh, this is what I was mentioning to you all that globally there are certain accounting rules. This is what we call as globally financial reporting standards, not just uh, which are applicable in India, but which are recognized all over the globe. Then talking about multidisciplinary case study, multidisciplinary case study is nothing but all the subjects that you have in your uh, CA final examination, all the remaining seven subjects. It's a mix of all of those, a case study. That is a case study is basically practical examples. You will be asked, you will be given a particular situation, say, pertaining to accounts or pertaining to audit, and you will have to answer uh, in that situation what would be the correct thing to do. So this is a mixture of all your seven subjects. Now, uh, when I say electives, what happens is this is, uh, as I was mentioning, the uh, six paper electives. Out of these uh, six options that you have, you have to select one in your CA final examination. I did not have that option. Instead of uh, CA elective paper, we again had uh, a subject called ISCA. That is nothing but IT. We did not have these options. Uh, however, you all would be very lucky because you all would have an option to study every subject in detail. Now, if you see from the description of what I said, every subject is somewhere connected to the subject that you are going to study in your final CA. Risk management is somewhere connected to uh, your audit, internal audit. 
financial services and capital markets shares equity investment is somewhere connected to your financial management subject international taxation now a lot of people take international taxation for a very simple reason that in your direct tax paper of final ca there is already 30 marks of international taxation included so there will be some overlapping and you might have to study less for this subject economic laws is again connected to your laws it will be overlapping gfrs now uh, as i was mentioning that uh, in 2017 we came up uh, with uh, the international financial reporting standards in india as well that is basically a global reporting framework in india as well so now your accounts and your gfrs are highly connected subjects because they are almost the same uh, multidisciplinary case study is again a mix of all your subjects so the elective paper is actually going into detail into one of the subjects that you like so this uh, decision whenever you have to take will be after you have started your article ship so you will have some idea of what you want to do not necessarily of course because trust me till date even i have no idea where i want to go and what i want to become but you will have some idea of okay i might be interested in learning this further or knowing more about this subject that is when you actually decide that okay this is the subject that i want to go ahead with the other criteria often people use is basically the passing percentage however uh, one suggestion never rely on icis passing percentage icis basically the institute of chartered accountants of india who takes these examinations never rely on their passing percentages because uh, say suppose this year the passing percentage of one examination is 40% next year it will go down to 20 so you can never rely on their passing percentages so do not take a decision based on that i would suggest another good thing about the ca elective paper is that it's an open book examination now uh, it can be good or bad because uh, if it's an open book examination all questions are going to be practical uh, situations that will be given to you there are not going to be direct questions it's an open book examination you can take any book whichever book you want and any number of books as well in fact so this will give you an experience of an open book examination uh, you need to be prepared for it but uh, of course it's manageable so this is your ca elective uh, bit uh then once you give all these papers and you score a minimum of 40 in each and again uh, a minimum of 50% of each group you clear your ca final examination and once you clear your examination you still have a few months of article ship left and once you're done with your article ship then you finally we can be called as a chartered accountant so just to understand the timeline because uh, what happens is uh, as i said your ca is completely different from your graduation your uh, in fact uh, in february t- uh, 2021 the university grants commission of india granted ca the uh, tag of a post graduation degree so now when you call yourself a ca you are not just a graduate you are a post graduate candidate your graduation will be different now uh, what happens is suppose let's take an example so all those who will be uh, clearing their 10th in 2022 that is the coming year how their ca journey would look like what would be the timeline by the time you become a ca so you clear your 10th in 2022 you uh, join some college or you continue with your school and you clear your 12th in 2024 that is two years later once you clear your 12th in 2024 so that would be around uh, i think in march that you would be done with your 12th so somewhere in december or january before that you would have to register for your ca foundation examination once you register say uh, you cleared your 12th in uh, march you will have to give your ca foundation in the upcoming attempt of june june 2024 you give your examination in june the result comes around in july july end around Uh, once you clear that you have to prepare for the next level that is intermediate that will be just after one year that is in may 2025 however this is a bit of your ca simultaneously you have to look for your graduation ca will not give you graduation and unless you are a graduate you cannot even give your ca final examination so you have to do a graduation now what is a graduation is those uh, degrees where uh, for which you will be going to college ca does not have any college it's a professional degree you do not have colleges that uh, give you a ca as a course it's a professional degree which is managed completely differently by the institute of chartered accountants of india but simultaneously you need to go to a college to do your graduation 
that would be a uh, bachelor of commerce bfm bath these are basically variations now what people usually ask me is what they should do with ca what goes best with ca should i do bcom should i do uh, bath uh, should i do bfm that is business financial management uh, bachelor of financial management and all those uh, courses honestly from my experience i'll tell you once you join the ca curriculum your graduation firstly you won't have to study much for it secondly it is very easy it becomes very easy and thirdly whichever course you do bcom bath bfm and all these are multiple courses it will not matter because your ca degree overpowers these courses so ultimately when you go to uh, go outside to any kind of a job market or anywhere in the world or for further studies also your graduation will not be of that much relevance however if you are aiming for uh, something uh, like going abroad if you are aiming to go abroad your graduation score does matter so you need to get a good score in graduation if you are planning to go abroad and uh, you want to do something in that field as well and trust me as a ca you can have that option as well i will come to that later however you need to have a good graduation score now uh, what a lot of people would be thinking is how to manage graduation with ca trust me it's a cake walk graduation is not that difficult uh, to do because once you're doing the ca curriculum graduation kind of uh, is a subset of your ca but a much easier subset of your ca so uh, after 2024 you start your uh, intermediate prep preparing for your intermediate in 2025 simultaneously you will be in the first year of your graduation fyb com or fyb fm or whatever but you will be in your first year of graduation simultaneously so you will have to this is where you have to decide basically what kind of a college do you want to go to now when i say what kind of a college do you want to go to uh, what i mean is there are certain colleges which require you to compulsorily attend for 75% where the, whereas there are certain colleges which give you a leeway it does not matter whether you actually attend your college or not if you are to take my personal suggestion i would say you take up a college where you actually have to attend because trust me amongst all this ca curriculum your article ship uh, your stress that you go through it is very much fun i would say to go to a college because trust me you're not going to study much there you're going to attend lectures but not study much but you will have people around you who would be going through the same thing as you so i did my uh, graduation as i was mentioning from nm college or the nursi monji college and i found uh, amazing friends out there and uh, we are friends till date i will introduce uh, them to you all soon uh, in the further slides the point is we are friends still date and this is something for which i would suggest everyone to take up college because it gives you kind of a break from your ca curriculum trust me in that entire day which i was mentioning to you all of 7 to uh, 10 in the night that those 3 hours of college made me go through my day so it helps it helps because you are with the same set of people who are going through the same thing as you so i would suggest everyone to go to college take part in college activities as well because trust me ca will consume a lot of your time but if you do not allow ca to overpower what you actually like doing ca can be fun as well so for that you need to have a good college life i would suggest so this is your where you will be having your first year of graduation Uh, and you give your intermediate in say suppose may 2025 you clear your intermediate examination the results would come around in july uh, so honestly when i gave my intermediate examination uh, i it was 2015 when i gave the intermediate examination uh, i remember on the day of the result i had still gone to college and uh, suddenly while coming uh, returning home everybody started calling saying that okay the results are out and uh, i was in the train and uh, i don't know if you all know but uh, a lot of times in the train you do not get network so that's a lot of problem and i was trying to check my result so i stayed boringly but i got down uh, in between at a station and i'm like no i have to check the result right now one of my friends was also there with me and even she had uh, given the examination so my relief i had cleared the examination and i was very happy but on the contrary the friend that i got down with she did not clear so there is one thing about ca i would uh, say that when you clear an examination you will feel more of relief because there will be people around you who would not have cleared and trust me 
when uh, people do not clear it has nothing to do with their level of intelligence or smartness everyone who does see if you go to a college good college say narsi monji college everyone in the college the cut off of that college is around 93 94% so basically above average students everywhere however it depends on your luck it completely depends on your luck whether you clear or not you have to give of course your 100% but then it does not guarantee you the outcome however you need to have a belief in yourself do not let that uh, failure overpower you and trust me it's completely okay to take multiple attempts once you clear your ca final examination nobody is going to ask you how many attempts you took to clear it so do not ever get bogged down by the fact that okay i might have to give multiple attempts or i might have to study a lot it's okay everyone has their own timeline you need to follow your own so uh, that is one thing uh, about intermediate say you given may 2025 you got your result in july and then say around september you commence your article ship by this time you will be in the second year of your graduation you give your uh, you continue with your article ship your second year continues and then you go to your third year of uh, graduation you are still doing your article ship and by the time you are continuing to do your article ship say in around uh, march or april 2027 you will be done with your graduation now uh, one question i think that a lot of people would be thinking about is how do you get time to study for your graduation so uh, any uh, article ship form that you go to uh, be it a big four small form mid size form uh, any form they will give you leaves for your graduation so if you have your examinations all bcom examinations or all bfm examinations you will get certain leaves so something like one day before the exam that entire span of 15 days you will get a leave now people uh, would be thinking that whether that leave is uh, substantial enough to pass the examination trust me it's more than enough because uh, the syllabus of the graduation is very easy as compared to your ca uh, curriculum so what happens is you've already what you've done in your intermediate is something you would continue to do in your graduation so you would already be knowing all of it like when i used to do uh, my uh, give my graduation examinations these examinations would be like a vacation for me because i would get a break from my article ship and uh, i would be sad when the exams get over because okay i have to return back to my article ship i have to start working now so it's that uh, easy to clear your graduation uh, with your ca you don't have to study much for your graduation one day before the examination two days before the examination is sufficient and trust me everybody does that itself so you don't need to get bogged down by it and uh, it's very helpful in fact uh, a few days i did not even have my books of graduation i used to uh, purchase it just before one day of the examination so it's a piece of cake if you will be easily able to manage both of them once you complete your graduation say around in march 2027 you will have one year before your ca final examination in 2028 six months before that you take your leave from your article ship you give your examination in may 2028 say suppose you get your result by july you will continue you will still have six months of article ship left you complete that article ship you get your result and that is when you become a chartered accountant so if you see from clearing your 12th to becoming a chartered accountant it's uh, almost a 6 years journey however at the end of the day when you get this tag in front of your name it's totally worth it now uh, before i go ahead on career options as a chartered accountant or uh, that you have uh, does any of you have any questions regarding the curriculum is it compulsory to do bcom with ca or can we do other courses also you can definitely do some other course also uh, like you have bas bfm the point is it will not matter whichever course you do uh, because as i was mentioning ca overpowers them but if you have a specific liking say so towards bfm you can do bfm with ca you can do uh, bas with ca it's okay any graduation Actually, course is okay students who are already chartered accountants so they told me that to bcom because it simil- uh, the portion is exactly the similar or much of an easier version for bcom true true so as i was mentioning bcom is uh, it's a piece of cake like if you're doing ca bcom is as i was saying one day before the exam you study and trust me you will clear i have not seen a single person who's not cleared the bcom examination uh, doing chartered accountancy 
you will right definitely now, hear bass bfm they will require a little bit more of your attention okay right now i'm yes, doing sorry, my continuation from jk shah classes so like uh, did you right. do any coaching classes for foundation or did you just self study yes no uh, so uh, all three levels uh, i was also connected with jk shah Uh, okay. So I did my twelfth also from J K Shah. So I think they have this early bird batch in my time. They yeah, have yeah, this, yeah. Twelfth this uh, foundation combined. Yeah. So I did that batch with J K Shah, and all three levels I was uh, with J K Shah. Uh, however, uh, it depends on person to person, as I'd say. If you are comfortable with J K Shah, well and good. Uh, I yeah, was comfortable in uh, foundation and intermediate. Uh, but by the time I reached C A final, uh, I. preferred studying by myself though i had enrolled for the classes i did not attend a lot of classes because of the timing and article ship also i preferred studying by myself but again it depends person to person if you are liking and you are actually able to study there nothing like it even i did my foundation from there and it did help me because being in jk shah we have actually 7 hours of classes for ca inter so like if we work in big four then there's no time left for self study Uh, so so it's what will happen is if you work in a big four? Uh, for, be, trust me, I'm from a big four uh, article ship background. I have done my article ship. I cleared my chartered accountancy in the first attempt. Oh, okay. it is definitely right. manageable. So what happens is uh, after your intermediate, uh, when you actually have to uh, decide whether you want to give, go for a big four or not. So suppose you take into statutory audit function or taxation function. the big four will offer you so much of a practical experience like you would have heard i think a lot of people say that when you join a big four you do not get that much of experience because it's a very huge firm they do not give quality work that is not true i learned majority of the work in my article ship so your article ship will define you as a professional uh, so if you are actually passionate about going to a big four go for it because one advantage of a big four is it will give you better leads so uh, though it might not you give you much time for your studies you will not miss any of your classes that is for sure nobody in a big four also asks people to miss their classes ca final classes nobody can ask you to do that you will get leaves 6 to 7 months before your examination whereas in the mid size or small firms you have 4 months leave so then that helps you cover up is it advisable to do an mba after ca or just in ca just a ca is enough so uh, i would say both of them are completely different things now uh, what happens is uh, ca is more of technical knowledge uh, technical knowledge yeah. when i say you know the law you know accounts you know tax being an mba uh, teaches you how to sell what you know that is basically an mba it might not add much to your technical knowledge but it will give you that tag uh, if you want to do a mba after ca one thing is for sure uh, you might not be able to uh, continue with the technical work that you do that is as a chartered okay. accountant if you are doing statutory audit you are doing tax you if you do an mba your mba will overpower your ca degree so you might not be able to do that work secondly if you want to do an mba make sure you do it only from the top institutes only then it will add value i am ab or c or even the top 10 iims or uh, if you want to do an international mba that is also fine because i have an uncle who is an alumni of iim ahmedabad right so he is like um, uh, an mba is advisable after ca because it gives you more of a practical knowledge so so uh, i will uh, share you one video of my friend in the coming slides who is from iim ahmedabad currently uh, he just uh, cleared his or got done with his iim ahmedabad uh, management studies uh, a year earlier and he's con- currently working in investment banking now what is investment banking is basically uh, if a company wants to invest funds in some other company deciding whether i should invest my money or not as a ca you will not be doing these things you will be technically sound that is whether this thing is right or wrong okay you will not be more into advising people if you want to do something where you are advising someone that okay you should do this you can try this then you go for an mba okay thank you welcome okay oh, my questions in the chat box as well so uh should we go ahead with them first or 
uh, the ones that are asking right now. How do we get article ship in Big Four? Uh, so if I give you my email ID and uh, two years later uh, you want to do an article ship in a Big Four, you can send me your resume. I will forward it. So basically, article ship in a Big Four. Uh, there are two ways. Firstly, if you get into a good college, something like I was mentioning, uh, I did in Narsi Monji College. These Big Fours they come to your college campus for your interviews. So that is one path. Second is if you have or if you know people who work in those Big Four organizations, you can just forward your CV through them. and they will be considered okay ma'am thank you so can you just send your email id in the chat i will i will definitely i will yeah. thank you welcome so i think people who want to uh, raise questions can just say and then i'll go to the chat box questions any other question somebody wants to talk about or uh, should i go to the chat box questions ma'am uh, suppose during the article ship period if we have classes in the morning followed by the office hours then how do we manage the college attendance uh okay so suppose uh, you join any kind of a, a ca class uh, curriculum so say, say suppose she was mentioning jk shah which is a uh, very well known classes they will not keep a class timing that clashes with your college they know you have to attend college they will not keep such class timings so trust me all these three organizations your college your ca classes and your article ship know the existence of the remaining two and they will work in coordination so nothing is going to overlap do not worry about that okay ma'am thank you any other question let me just go through the chat box questions i have compiled them so i could uh, ask them sure yeah. sure we can go uh, so the first one we have is what happens in article ship <laughs> that's a very broad question i'd say uh, but uh, suppose uh, article ship the first year when you go to your article ship any firm you go to they will first teach you what you have to do now uh, articles are like kids that come to you uh, the people that you go to for work are going to be uh, much 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 more experienced than you are so they are going to teach you what they want you to do it's as simple as that so they're going to teach you uh, what kind of uh, work you should do something uh, about the firm that you should know all these things uh, they will teach you and then you start implementing once you start implementing you will rise up the uh, they will rise up the level of work that they give you so sometimes uh, they might give you just work that is you compare two things but when you actually start using your brain or uh, you actually start uh, applying what you have learned in your ca curriculum to what you are practically doing they will start giving you better work so when i did my article ship from a uh, big four firm in statutory audit department in the first year what i used to do is uh, i am given an invoice that is uh, company ka itna kharcha hua hai uske aage ye bill hai i am comparing the two things that is that was my sole job in the uh, first one or two months just then i started actually applying uh, what i had studied in my intermediate and in my foundation to what i was doing and i started asking questions that is when i actually they started giving me more work certain complex areas like doing taxation doing the revenue of a particular company so then that is when they started elevating the work that they give, gave to me and uh, i started doing all the independently uh, the audits so that happens in audit now if you go to tax the first year they might just ask you to uh, compare the tax return but in the next year they might ask you that okay if the company has this kind of a uh, income what should be the tax how should they pay it so they will start asking you to apply for it so it will depend on the type of article ship uh, firm that you choose but ma majorly the first year will be all about learning second year will be about implementing third year you will become kind of a pro at it uh right so the next question is uh, could you talk a little bit more about the article ship process what kind of work goes in i think you answered this so is there anything you want to anything ask? further you all want to know about article ship so it's uh, so does article ship may be a hindrance in your studies of ca finding 
uh, if you ask for my personal opinion, uh, no, uh, article ship was not a hindrance, but it actually supported me uh, in my studies. Uh, how is basically when you are actually studying a particular concept, you get to practically apply it. It has a completely different uh, Im impact on you. You never tend to forget it. Therefore, I learned a lot from my article ship, which I was able to apply in my CA final examination. And as I was mentioning, I got good leaves. I got six months of leaves. And even before that, say uh, I worked hard for a month, I want two days off to study. Nobody in my firm is going to refuse that to me. So I did manage to get leaves in between as well and at the end as well to compensate for my studies. Uh, so the next question is for article ship, do we have to apply to the firms or do they come to us? Uh, you have to apply to the firms. So as I was mentioning, uh, what happens in an article ship is if you are at a particular college, there might be certain firms that come to your college. The other option is that you have certain contacts in those firms. Like now you know me from Deloitte. I have contacts in all the other three big fours as well. I know people from EY, I know people from KPMG, I know people from PwC. So if you in the future want to apply to any big four firm or even a mid-sized firm that I know of, I will know a lot of people. Through me, you can pass on your CV and I will forward it to those firms. I'm one example. You might know a few more people who are in the same field. So through those contacts, you pass on your CVs and then you are shortlisted for interviews. Uh, can we do CA, CS, or CFA or CPA simultaneously? Okay. Uh, legally, it's not allowed to do a CS uh, with a CA because you are already doing your graduation. So legally, it's not allowed. Uh, however, a lot of people, if practically I am to say, do CS with their uh, CA. But uh, one thing I would uh, ask you is whether you want to actually do it. Do not accumulate degrees just because you want to do it. If you are doing a CS along with a CA, make sure you know that what is the relevance of that CS in your uh, curriculum. Uh, because I have friends who have done CS, they are not utilizing their degree to any extent and nor does it add any value in the market also when you go because uh, it's not very possible for you to apply both of them. Talking about a CPA, uh, I would suggest you do a CPA after you become a CA because every CPA, depending on the country you opt for to do the CPA, has certain exemptions for CA. I will come to that in the uh, slide as well, where I'll be explaining you all that if you all want an international degree, what all exemptions are available for a qualified chartered accountant. Uh, if you want to do MBA specifically, so is it preferable to do CA for three years and then CAD, or we should do a normal BBA or BCom college and then give that? So uh, it will depend on uh, a few things. First is uh, what kind of MBA you want to do. If you want to go for an MBA in finance, uh, I would suggest uh, CA is one thing that will give you a lot of command over uh, your technical skills. Now, if you see, usually what I have noticed, honestly, uh, is that uh, MBAs that are uh, MBA in finance, but not chartered accountants, they know how to sell themselves, but they are not technically very strong. Even I, uh, during my day to day work, I face people who have done an MBA. They might be very good at their communication. They might be very good at uh, selling the work that they do. But when I argue with them on technical grounds, they do not have answers. If you want to be a technically uh, well known uh, MBA, then I would suggest you do a CA. Depends what degree you want to use when you go uh, in the future. If you want to use your technical skills and be able to sell it, then you do both of them. If you only want something where uh, you're able to market yourself better uh, and do those things, I think uh, then you can do only an uh, MBA and exclude the CA portion. All right. So the next question is, I am not good at computers. So do I have to do any course for the article ship? Oh, no. Trust me, even I'm not very great at computers. Uh, article ship will make you great at Excel because you are going to be working eight hours on Excel. So trust me, even when I was an article, I did not know anything about Excel. Also, uh, I think I, I was, I'm not very technically sound when it comes to Excel computers, but you learn it during the course of your article ship. You do not need to know computer as such. You just need to know Excel, which you will learn during your article ship. Also, as a part of the CA curriculum, they have certain courses like GMCS and ITT, as they used to call it, where they teach you these things. So before you go for your article ship, you will have this 15 day of seminar where they will teach you these things. So do not worry on that. Uh, when shall we start studying for CAFC? 
FC, that is the foundation. So you have a bit uh, this with the new terminologies. I'm assuming it's CA foundation. Uh, we used to call it CPT. So if uh, I'm to tell you when to start studying for your CA foundation, uh, honestly, when I started studying was uh, kind of six months before the examination, I started studying for the examination, not fully because my 12th was also going uh, I had college also. But then a bit bit uh, the foundation course is not that huge. So in six months, I planned my study in a way that, OK, uh, I can comfortably cover it in that period of six months. Uh, approximately, how much do we get paid in article ship in Big Four? So uh, usually the Big Four range is a, a bit different across the Big Fours as well. But what Deloitte offers is uh, 15, 20, and 25. That is 15,000 in your per month in your first year, uh, 20,000 per month in your second year, and 25,000 per month in your third year. However, I would suggest do not go on the amount. You might find that the amount is not very high, but uh, once you clear that examination and you have that before tag, your salary will be higher and your stipend won't matter. A difference between these uh, kind of jobs given to a CFA and a CA. Uh, also, their average pay difference. Average, sorry, the last part I missed. Average pay difference. Okay, so uh, again, uh, CA and CFA. CA is, as I was mentioning, a person who is technically sound in accounts, tax, law, these things. CFA, on the other hand, is a person who is very good by the, with the finances. I know what should be done as per the rules of the uh, country that I work for. But a CFA is kind of a businessman who will give you the value of your money. That is the difference between a CA and CFA. CFA is more into business. That is, they will give you the value of the money that if I have to invest something, what a rate should be uh, at, at or what return I will get on the money that I invest. The, those business decisions and everything is the job of a CFA. Now talking about the pay difference. Again, it uh, varies depending on your uh, organization and what uh, company you work for. So almost there is not much difference. But then again, uh, it's like a CA in a big four firm gets paid more than CFA is working for small firms. But then on the other hand, CFAs who are at a good position in a industry, a good industry will get paid much more than a CA working at some firm. So it will all depend firstly on your actual skill set as a CA or a CFA. And it will depend on what company you choose to work for. Right. So the next question we have is daily. How many hours does it take for article ship? Uh, OK, uh, that varies again. Uh, so small firms, they usually have a fixed schedule. Nine to five, nine to six. That is uh, basically a uh, sorry, not nine to five, nine to six. Uh, rather, you all would be starting at 11. So 11 to 630 or 11 to seven. Mid-sized firms uh, usually uh, will have a timetable of 11 to 8 around. Usually, in during peak seasons, it might extend up to 9 or 10. Now, uh, talking about a big four, uh, <laughs> so I, as I was mentioning, uh, in peak seasons, when I say peak season, for me, in my article ship, the peak season was April, May, and June. Uh, my, art, uh, my tenure of work uh, extended uh, up to... 12 hours, 13 hours, 11 to 11, 11 to 12 sometimes, it happens. And it's okay because if I was working this late uh, on certain days, I automatically get a comp off. That is once this busy season is over, I can just utilize the extra hours that I work and take an off uh, after those three months. So on those uh, after those three months, I could leave at five. If I have a good repo with my senior, I could leave at four sometimes and not get my leaves accounted for. So I have done those things as well. So basically, when you have to work, you have to work for 10, 12 hours. But if there is no much work, you get to leave early in a big four or a mid-sized firm for that matter. However, in small-sized firms, in certain mid-sized firms, the time range is fixed. So irrespective of whether you have work or not, you have to fulfill that time. That does not happen in big fours. If you have work, you stay. You do not have work. You can leave if you maintain a good rapport with your senior. Uh, does CA increase chances of selection in a top IIR? Yes. Uh, so even I did not know this, but one of my friends, uh, he got into I when he got into IMA. I have people who got into IMB. So uh, IMA, in fact, has a certain amount of reservation for CS, as uh, I know that they tend to prefer people who have done CS. 
so yes it does give you an added advantage uh, can you please guide me as i am a bit hesitant in doing ca as every second person i see is becoming ca so yeah any advice uh okay so one thing is uh, every second person becoming ca uh i would uh, the thing is you need to know what portal are you looking at when you say uh, every second person is becoming a ca so if i went to norsi monji college uh, 90% of the people in that college are doing ca so you are looking at a very restricted background now if you look around the country why do you think ca is uh, something which is well known and uh, respected for because there are not many cas and the number of people who start is not necessary the number of people who end become end up becoming a ca as i was mentioning it's a pyramid the people who reach the top are very few as compared to the people who start so it's a pyramid and therefore it is always a valued profession in fact uh, the ca final pass percentages sometimes it can go up to 10% 9% but there has been attempts where the pass percentage has been 2 to 3% so every time when you see that okay in this attempt uh, a lot of people became cs trust me icii will come with something new and they will regulate the number of cs in the economy and it will get regulated so that is nothing to be worried about did you join nm after 10th or after 12th i joined nm after 10th uh, so i did my 11th 12th also from nm and my graduation also from nm what are the career options as a ca uh i will get to that slide there are multiple career options as a ca so uh, just after this question round about the curriculum i'll go to that and if any of your question is not answered then then we'll again have a q and a session where you can ask me anything specific you want uh when to apply for ca foundation so uh if i'm not wrong there's a time limit you have to apply some 6 uh, to 8 months before the examination starts so somewhere around in uh, october november december you need to apply if you want to give the june attempt i think that's about it so we can continue okay so i'll just go on to the next uh, topic that i was talking about that is career options as a chartered accountant which was one of the questions also i received so though uh, when we spoke about article ship i gave you a very few options uh, direct tax indirect tax uh, statutory audit and uh, this internal audit however when you become a chartered accountant you realize the industry is huge you have multiple options and trust me i have uh, seen cas doing work which i never would have thought that okay a ca could do this work as well so uh, statutory audit as i have explained i am a person who does statutory audit so it is something which is uh, regulated by the government it is compulsory uh, which has to be done for certain companies which is if there are people investing money in a company they need to be assured that okay their money is not being misutilized this is my job i need to give that assurance next internal audit and risk advisory internal audit and risk advisory uh, is mainly uh, in financial services sector so when i say financial services banks and nbfcs are the main market for this uh, sector the reason being again that uh, there a lot of money is involved people's money is involved so rather than statutory audit cannot give you that much assurance because the audit once a year we cannot give you assurance of all the things that are happening throughout the year so for that there is an internal committee uh, or an internal audit department that helps you to give uh, reliance over that whether a particular bank has what are the risks that the bank is facing and whether the controls are in place to mitigate those risks so that is basically risk advisory where you also advise the client that okay here i see a loophole where you can improve your process so that is internal audit and risk advisory direct tax indirect tax that i was mentioning direct tax basically uh, it's not just about filing returns it's about going to litigations as well so somebody who's interested in some kind of a law or uh, fighting cases as well you do get to go to not uh, of course you can do not get to represent you're not a lawyer but you do uh, get to go to litigations and uh, give a uh, certain file certain uh, claims against the department if you feel that uh, okay the tax laws are not being applied or you can file loopholes in that tax law that can uh, help your client so that is into direct tax indirect tax again gst compliances as a company when do i have to pay gst when i do not have to pay gst how much gst do i have to pay on my products uh, what about the gst that i have paid can i utilize that gst in some other way that is the job of indirect tax team okay okay 
that is the job of an indirect tax team uh going to financial due diligence does anyone know what is financial due diligence anyone heard of it no okay so as complicated uh, as it sounds uh, financial due diligence is a complicated term but it's very simple and uh, it is somewhere connected to audit also uh, so people who have done their article chip and audit after audit can move to this field also financial due diligence i have seen in fact people move from tax also to financial due diligence what is financial due diligence is basically now uh, i'm a company i want to acquire another company i need to know whether what would be the right price for me to pay to, for that company so if i have decided on a particular price i would like a team to conduct an independent analysis of what that company does how much money can that company make and whether the amount that i will be paying to buy that company is good for me or is will my amount uh, not be covered in my future profits so basically analyzing a company as a whole uh, to ensure that use uh, these days there are a lot of acquisitions that happen one company acquiring the other one company merging with the other so when these kind of uh, deals happen you need someone to analyze those companies and tell the person who's acquiring or tell the company who's merging that whether the amount that they are paying and whether the company that they are going to is worth it or not that is the job of financial due diligence now uh, to think what an audit auditor might do in financial due diligence or how audit will help in financial due diligence it's very simple financial due diligence is all about reading through the financial information that you get so if you do something in audit you become very well versed with financial information so you can move to financial due diligence and you can start analyzing what you already know you know how to read something but to interpret it is completely different statutory audit teaches you to read financial due diligence will teach you to interpret what you read so it will help you analyze things so it is completely based on analysis next is forensic audit now what is forensic audit as interesting as it sounds uh, it is so these days there are a lot of frauds happening in the system uh, so there are people who actually investigate into those frauds like there is cbi for crime investigation there are forensic auditors who investigate financial frauds and when i say investigate they look at everything including your personal records uh, whatsapp messages email messages everything i have people uh, i have friends who work in forensic audit they literally have to investigate go through the personal information check cell phones of their clients check through emails of their clients video recordings footages everything and so basically who offers for a for forensic audit so say suppose i was mentioning that uh, there is one organization called sebi that is securities and exchange board of india who feels who is regulating these companies that are listed now if that uh, regulation regulatory body feels that okay this company has something wrong it can hire one of the firms to do a forensic audit of that company that is when that firm will have the right to investigate each and everything pertaining to that company now uh, who does forensic audit so if you want to join either financial due diligence forensic audit there are specific firms so even the big fours for example they do these sectors though the big fours uh, a very common notion is that they do audit and tax that's not the case there are big fours a lot all the big fours in fact they have a forensic audit department they have a financial due diligence department even the small firms or the mid sized firms do have this so if you are interested into something like this uh, forensic is something you can approach trust me your ca knowledge will not come to that much use here but of course reading financial statements is an added advantage but the skills that you get in your ca course that is basically uh, analysis analytical skills uh, or a skepticism when i say skepticism basically developing a doubt in your mind is something that will help you in forensic audit going to accounting advisory accounting advisory is basically uh, so say suppose when you do statutory audit you tell your client okay this is right this is wrong but when you are giving accounting advisory you tell them okay that this is not the right way but this is what you can do advising them that how they can do their accounting or if there is a very complex transaction not everyone is very well versed with the standards that are there the global standards you give them an advice that based on the reading of those standards this is how you should treat this particular transaction that is accounting advisory 
system auditor uh, if somebody is good uh, in it somebody wants to build up a career in it but a bit uh, not that technical you do not want to do engineering but you want to know how the system operates and uh, what are the loopholes in a system so what happens is all these companies they do their accounting in some or the other kind of a software now there can be loopholes in the software itself a system auditor will identify those loopholes in an it software that is system audit uh, so if you want to become a system auditor or something like that you have certain specific certifications that you do to become a system auditor after your ca that is cisa disa that is certified uh, information system auditor you can do those courses to get into system audit industry uh, now as broad as this term is uh, when you say i have a career in an industry uh, let me tell you i have myself experienced uh, industry as well uh, i uh, recently in december moved from deloitte and i wanted to go to some industry now when i say industry uh, it is any kind of company so earlier that company used to be my client now i will work for my client on my client's payroll so be it lnt be it uh, hdfc bank be it icici bank or uh, blue star engineering or any kind of a company i will be recruited as a chartered accountant of that company now when i am recruited as a chartered accountant of that company what i will do there is basically there can be three to four things that usually chartered accountants are recruited for i can be recruited to do the accounting of that company so i can check the financial statements i can make the financial statements one job is that second job is analysis so now the financial statement is made by one team now the cfos of the company or the people who own the company they need an analysis on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis that okay if my uh, turnover or revenue has gone up what is the reason my cost has gone up what is the reason that is called financial planning and analysis they develop budgets for the company that okay next month i should have this much budget for my work that is the job of an fpna department as we call it financial planning and analysis so that also work a ca does in an industry the third is finance hardcore finance so finance as i was mentioning is something about uh, at what rate i should take a loan what are the sources from which i can get money for my business at what rate i should invest the money of my business if you want to get into finance a cfa with a ca uh, is a good option again so uh, that will help you to get into finance even cas uh, there are a lot of people uh, there are a lot of companies that have cas as their cfos also cfo is basically who handles these finances so it not only depends on your designation but also your skills so broadly in industry this is what you do uh, then the next is valuation valuation is something uh, one thing i would say it is one area where mbas are preferred so a ca plus mba will definitely be a good choice if you want to make a career in valuation valuation is basically uh, so if i am selling my company at what value i should be selling my company to derive that value as easy as it sounds there are a lot of factors that have to be considered valuation deals with those things valuing a particular transaction a sell a buy those things are dealt with in valuation so these are broadly i would rather say a few career options that uh, i could even think of as a chartered accountant that you have for yourself there are many more and as time passes by you will realize that okay this is also something i can get into this is also something i can do as a chartered accountant so even more than these there are options available for chartered accountants it's not just audit and tax so these are the career options then moving on to uh, one question that was asked uh, in the chat box which i remember was uh, what we should do with chartered accountancy so that will depend now uh, i honestly did not do anything further for a very simple reason i am uh, what the role that i am currently in statutory audit uh, does not require me to study more uh, my chartered accountancy degree is good for what i do i can do uh, other things as well but uh, i believe in getting more practical experience than uh, putting my uh, time into studying further now if you do a chartered accountancy and you realize that okay i want to pursue something other than hardcore uh, technical skills i want to do something where i can deal with clients i can actually give advisory i can give consulting on a particular transaction 
you do an mba it teaches you skills mba might not give you a lot of technical knowledge but it develops your skills so there is a lot of uh, i would not say a myth rather because uh, that is somewhere true also that chartered accountants are are not very good at their conversational skills and mbas on the other hand are very good at it so uh, usually uh, if you see in certain companies uh, there would be chartered accountants who get intimidated by these mbas now why does that happen is uh, if you realize that chartered accountants do not have a good communication skills that is not the case being uh, someone who has studied from a good school you you would have learned english you would have good communication skills and trust me this course will help you develop that also that is not the case but uh, what happens is uh, a lot of chartered accountants in india uh, are from remote areas so uh, you will see a lot of chartered accountants clearing from remote areas of rajasthan and gujarat as well so these people do not have access to those facilities that we do and therefore might not have that many uh, that good communication skills as an mba does but technically every ca is definitely very sound so mba will help you give that uh, added advantage of developing your skill set cfa uh, as i was mentioning chartered accountancy is more technical into accounts though it has a few subjects but like financial management but they only brush up the concepts of finance if you want to get into hardcore finance that is uh, as i was mentioning value of money you do a cfa with a ca and if you like law something uh, you are inclined more towards law i have seen people also do chartered accountancy with cs and an llb degree and pursue law because there is corporate law as well so corporate law is basically uh, laws applicable to companies so if you are technically sound as a chartered accountant you can that degree can definitely help you here so these are certain options that are available within india now uh, chartered accountants do have a global recognition as well now if you are a chartered accountant what you can do outside india as well like if you are not sure that whether you want a career in india itself and you want to go somewhere abroad as well you want you might want to explore that chartered accountancy keeps those doors open you do have that option uh, so what happens is suppose uh, okay ca equivalent in other countries in india it's called a chartered accountant in canada usa and australia it is called a cpa so cpa canada is a different course cpa australia is uh, australia is a different course and cpa usa is a different course so they are called cpa is there certified public accountants and uh, if you want the chartered accountants equivalent uh, of uh, europe and middle east countries it's an acca so if you are a ca uh, and you want to pursue cpa to uh, keep your international options open in either of these countries what happens is if you are a chartered accountant and you want to pursue cpa canada there is a mutual recognition agreement as it is called mra between the institute of chartered accountants of india and the cpa body of canada what these uh, entities have decided amongst themselves is that an indian chartered accountant can be recognized as a cpa canada if they have to just clear the final examination which they call as cfe so you just have to give one exam and you will be a cpa canada as well after your chartered accountancy is cleared when it comes to cpa usa uh, what happens in cpa usa is that the examination itself is uh, i would rather say very easy as compared to cpa uh, canada because uh, there are four papers it's completely objective and uh, what happens is you have a span of like 6 to 10 months and you can clear all the four papers so something that we do over a course of 5 uh, to 6 years their ca equivalent has to just clear those four papers and they become a cpa usa there is one route also like what happens is a lot of people want to go to either canada or usa usa has a lot of entry restrictions canada is comparatively open to immigration so uh, if you want to move to either of these countries what you can do is you, after ca you can do a cpa usa just giving four examinations in a span of 6 months and what will happen is since there is a mutual recognition agreement between canada and usa you do not need to give any additional examination to become a cpa canada if you are a cpa usa so that is one route which is very easily followed uh, and another reason why people give cpa usa is for giving cpa canada you actually have to go to canada you cannot give the examination from india but cpa usa since uh, due to covid 19 it started a year back but you can give it now from india as well 
so that becomes again an added advantage when it comes to cpa australia cpa australia and icai have a mutual recognition agreement you do not need to give any additional examination to be recognized as a cpa australia you just need to have certain criteria fulfilled now when i say criteria it means uh, firstly something like uh, you need to have your uh, ca membership with the institute that you will get after you clear your ca final examination and complete your article ship so you need to be a member of the institute and there are certain uh, professional uh, hours that you have to have so that article ship helps you complete those hours as well so you can directly become a cpa australia once you are a ca if you apply then uh, moving on to if you want to build up a career somewhere in europe and middle east countries acc is the option now uh, acc uh, gives certain exemptions for qualified chartered accountants and in fact it gives exemptions for even intermediate cas so it's something like there are 13 examinations in acc ca that you have to give to become an acc ca if you are an intermediate cleared that i have cleared my intermediate ca i get four exemptions like out of 13 i don't have to give four papers but if i'm uh, i am a ca final student that is i have cleared my ca final examination i do not have to give nine papers out of 13 i just have to give four, four papers and i'll be an acc ca and uh, this helps you in recognizing in europe and middle east countries now uh, people do these courses not only to be uh, recognized abroad or not only to move abroad but uh, also these big four accounting firms in india these days what they do is now uh, since remote working has also become very famous none of us i have not been to my office for the past two years so we work remotely so now when i work remotely i also have the option of doing the work of a company that is currently placed in usa or canada now to know or do the work of that company i need to be well versed with their laws as well i need to be well versed with their accounting regulations as well so a lot of people do cpa not only to move abroad but to work for these multinational companies in india itself that opportunities are also available in a few of the big fours and other uh, companies uh, international firms to work as a cpa but from india itself so that is also something that you can pursue now uh, as i was mentioning that uh, i have uh, being in nursing monji college 90% of my friends are cas so i have tried to gather some uh, messages for you guys from cas who are in different different fields so as i was mentioning udit mehta uh, he is an investment banker he is from iima uh, he is currently working as an uh, investment banker jaydeep pura he is into indirect tax at pwc Viraj Parikh, uh, he is a system auditor as well, and he is into internal audit and risk advisory space. Uh, Harshit Shah, he is into forensic audit, and uh, Ayush, he is currently pursuing his MBA, but he has done his article ship in uh, direct tax, and uh, he has worked in due diligence as well. So the, there are certain messages that I have from these people for you guys. just a second is this audible the audio as well can somebody just confirm sorry it's not it's not it's not audible let me check not audible right uh no, no no can you stop screen share and uh, share with sound again i think then it will be audible sure i'll try that there will be a small check box uh, on the bottom left you have to stop share and then try again Hi guys, I am Ayush. Yeah, it's audible now. Yeah, I am chartered accountant. Talking about CA curriculum, you will get to learn a lot of subjects: account, tax, audit, law, to name a few. And you will be more or less master in all of them. CA curriculum also has three years of article ship in it. So I did my article ship in direct tax department. of course you may want to opt for a firm which gives you 
exposure to variety of subjects you may want to offer a firm that helps you or gives you exposure to audit as well as tax a basically mix of couple of subjects right so i did my article ship in direct tax where in my normal work day used to be to undertake a lot of compliance uh, starting from say return filing so that's the most basic one that we do also to advise clients in terms of tax structuring so the amount of work and the type of work depends a lot on the company or the firm that you work for after my article ship what i had realized or maybe i understand that uh, there is a lot i can explore uh, so i switched to financial due diligence wherein what we do is analyze financials and operations of a company that is in search for funding so we do a, an extensive analysis on the investi company for the investor now don't get bogged down if you don't understand a lot of it that's okay you will know more and more in coming days as in when you explore stuff you get out in the market overall i would say ca is a very demanding task as well as rewarding at the same time do go for it if if you are really considering right and all the best for the future bye hi guys Hello everyone. Hello everyone. I am Harshit Shah and I am a qualified chartered accountant and company secretary. I cleared my CA in May 2018. Speaking of my journey of completing CA, I was a person who used to study hard but also continued with my extracurricular activities. At all the three levels, I had planned my studies well in advance, prioritized my things, and managed my time in the most effective manner so that I don't have to miss on things that I like. It's completely on you how you manage your studies. CA examination is all about mind games. It requires a lot of patience and hard work to complete the entire journey. With consistent planning and effective execution, one can crack the CA examination. I feel sheer dedication, hard work, and a little bit of luck is all that that you need to pass CA examination. Currently, I'm working with Ernst and Young LLP, one of the big four consulting firm in India. in forensic and integrity services as a senior consultant my work is as exciting as it sounds the core area of my work includes conducting fraud investigation electronic data review background checks profiling of people fraud risk assessment fact finding assignments data analytics and conducting forensic interviews the end objective revolves around cracking the case by collecting sufficient evidence recording statements of people and documenting supporting available on record Good luck and all the very best for the future. Hello everyone. This is CA Jaydeep Bora. I have cleared my CA final exams in May 2018. So, how was my CA final exam experience like? CA final exam is a completely different ball game. It requires proper planning and execution, which is where our study leaves come into play. However, it is very essential to plan your subjects in such a way which is beneficial for you in my case it was one practical subject along with one theory subject but a thorough timetable along with proper execution is all that you need to clear your ca final exam smoothly currently i work as an assistant manager in price waterhouse and company llp i have been working in this organization since october 2018 my day to day work includes handling gst compliances along with gst transaction advisory and litigations thank you hi everyone i'm udit mehta i'm a chartered accountant qualified in may 2018 uh, with all india rank 41 i pursued mba post that from i am ahmedabad and i'm currently working in the investment banking field uh, so considering ca uh, course as a career opportunity it is one which provides you with a lot of scope which opens up a lot of doors a lot of opportunities going forward because finance is a key pillar in any industry in any company uh, that you see so having done ca it provides a strong foundational base in finance uh, and opens up this host of opportunities uh, available for you uh, the exams spanning across the three levels which is in entrance inter and uh, final ca is, uh, is something which will require a lot of effort and not just effort but consistent effort on uh, your part uh, once you choose to pick up this career line uh, it 
probably is a, a very tough course, but uh, putting in, but with the required efforts uh, from your end, uh, it is manageable at the end of the day. And it is so planning and uh, sticking to the plan across uh, longer time periods is something which will help you see through uh, this course. Uh, coming to the investment banking field, uh, the work that we do, uh, it involves helping companies uh, raise the funds that they require uh, from investors. And even if they want looking to acquire some other company, then helping those companies, advising them on financial fronts, uh, that is what the work of a typical investment banker entails. Uh, so I hope this gives you a very short but uh, clear idea about uh, what the CA course and investment banking domain in particular has to offer for you. Uh, good luck. Hello everyone, my name is Raj Parikh. I'm a Chartered Accountant and I cleared in the November 2018 attempt. Currently working in the FS Risk Advisory space at Grant Thornton. A little bit about the profile that I'm working into. FS refers to financial services, uh, which comprises the clients that we cater to. That is banks, NBFCs, capital markets, stock brokers, stock exchanges, fintech players, so on and so forth. Risk advisory as a profile uh, comprises of the services that you provide to these clients. It is commonly known in the uh, consulting world as the GRC framework, which is governance, risk and compliance. In simpler terms, we provide management assurance services where we give a certain amount of comfort to the management of that entity around the operating effectiveness and the business model that has been defined by them. Uh, of course, a little bit on the CA curriculum course, I'm sure Khyati and for that matter, every charter account that you meet will give you an insight into how the course is, what are the timelines, what are the subjects, the exams, so on and so forth. And uh, they will definitely speak about the fact that, yes, you need to manage your time. You need to be persistent and consistent with your studies uh, throughout those period of four to five years when you are actually pursuing this course. But there are two important learnings that I have had as a part of my journey uh, from being a student to a professional that is becoming a chartered accountant. And uh, those two pieces of advice is what I give to everyone, which is what I would like to share with you as well. The first bit, of course, that is if uh, any of you all out there does pursue this course uh, is around articleship. So uh, please, please, please do make sure if and when that opportunity does come by, you all select a good firm or a good team or a good profile while going and pursuing your articleship. The reason I'm saying this is at the age of 19 or so, if I'm not mistaken, you do start with your corporate career, uh, which is an added advantage in the CA course because before you become a professional, you've already entered into the corporate world and you interact with so many different people across geographies, across engagements. It gives you an exposure at quite an early age, which according to some people is not necessary, but trust me in the longer chain of events, it does make a lot of difference. So please make sure to all those who actually pursue this course and eventually uh, clear the exams and uh, pursue their articleship, make sure you select into a good firm and do it sincerely because in the longer chain of events, yes, it does make a lot of difference. The second bit is a little personal, uh, which is around the college life. As you all know, Charter Accountancy is a course which is a professional degree and you need to do your graduation from some college or the other. I did it from NM College and uh, that's one thing I want to share with you all that again, if it's applicable, if you all are pursuing CA and you are doing your graduation, Please make sure you do spend time in selecting a good college uh, that is doing your graduation from a good college because uh, college experience is something that will not come back. Uh, and I have known people who have given up on their college life just to pursue this course and to regret that in the longer chain of events. Um, so yes, if you manage your time well, you will be able to enjoy that college life along with the CA course. And as beautiful as the course is, it will definitely come with a lot of benefits which will need some of your sacrifices as well. But in the end, I'm sure it's going to make it worth it. So on that note, with whatever you all choose in your career, all the very best guys. And uh, I hope this session um, is actually useful. Cheers. Khyati, uh, you're muted.
Can you try now? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, so yeah, any further questions, please feel free to ask. So, like, should we go from the chat box or uh, do you all want to speak up? Hi. About investment banking, uh, do you do that after CA course or can you do that simultaneously as well? Uh, simultaneously, you cannot do investment banking. Uh, you will not get the. Uh, so basically, in in investment banking, usually CAs are uh, with an MBA is uh, something that is chosen. A CA getting into investment banking is possible, definitely, but uh, it it requires much more effort from your end. So uh, during your articleship, you will definitely not have that uh, as an option. But after you become a CA, uh, you will have that option of pursuing uh, or getting into investment banking. And that chances will be increased if you do an MBA. Okay, thank you. Anything people want to ask I, or? Uh, yeah, sure. chat box. Yeah, okay. Um, one of out of these career options, which has the highest salary? <laughs> See, uh, if I'm being honest with you, it all depends on your uh, skill set as well. Uh, of course, it would be stupid of me to deny that uh, uh, what we say an IMA uh, would earn a lot. But on the other hand, uh, I'd like to share my own personal experience. So I have not done an uh, MBA. I'm not from IMA, but uh, I continued with a big four even after my article trip and I got a double promotion. Due to which I'm earning as much as that person from IIM is earning. So it will all depend on your skill set. Uh, of course, MBA is uh, from a good institution earn very well. But chartered accountants who have got a good uh, skill set and have developed uh, their frame during their articleship as well, and they continue, they also earn very well. How much time does CPA and ACCA take to complete? Uh, since uh, CPA uh, will depend on the country, as again I was mentioning, uh, CPA Australia, you just have to go for the registration once you become a CA. Uh, CPA uh, USA, honestly, a chartered accountant can clear the CPA USA in six to eight months. It does not take a lot of time. It's just four subjects and all of them are objectives. If you've cleared CA, trust me, it will be a cakewalk, I believe. And uh, CPA Canada, uh, it is one examination uh, which you need to give. It, it is a three-day examination, the CFE examination. And you need a good six months to prepare for it. And you need to go to Canada to give that examination. All right. So I am in grade 11 IAC and I am very confused so as to what to do between CA and LLB. So can you please guide me? Sure. Uh, so uh, when you talk about LLB, just uh, if you're in grade 11, uh, I don't know how much idea you right now would have on the subjects. But uh, what you can do is, do you like a lot of theoretical subjects like law, where you read something, okay, you know that, okay, this is the law of the country and you want to apply it somewhere. That is where LLB will come into picture. And trust me, uh, not trying to demote any kind of a profession out here, but LLB is easier compared to uh, CA. So I because I have friends who have... Uh, been uh, who had who have done the course and it was quite easy they have managed it with their jobs so llb is easy if you think you have it in with uh, in you to do something more than that then ca would be advisable if uh, required if you really need more guidance about this uh, i we can definitely get in touch i can give you my email id and uh, i can guide you further on it uh, how much a ca earns approximately in starting years <laughs> Okay, uh, so CA uh, in starting years uh, range, I would say minimum, uh, it starts with these days, the packages have increased, but minimum, uh, if you go to a good firm, mediocre firm also, it is seven and a half to eight lakhs per annum. Uh, it expands up to, I have seen people uh, in CA curriculum in, from the uh, start of their career itself earning around 20 lakhs also per annum. So it again depends on what career you uh, or what field you go to. On an average, it ranges between 8 to 12 lakhs, I would say, in the starting. When did you join CA classes? Uh, so I did my uh, CA. So when I basically I went to Erem College, 
now in nm college 90% of the crowd is doing ca and i really wish there would be someone to guide me uh, when i was doing ca but uh, sadly there was no one I, i'm the only ca in my family as well so i just went along with the crowd and it turned out to be good for me because i love my uh, profession currently so uh, just to answer the question in short i joined my ca classes uh, with my 12th standard so as i was mentioning there is one co- uh, combined course that jk shah offers where you do 12th plus uh, ca foundation together that is the course i joined uh, to do my ca classes if we don't clear the ca final in first attempt does our article ship continue or do we have to take a drop year uh so if you do not clear your ca final in the first attempt uh, your article ship will not continue your time period of the article ship is 3 years fixed that is irrespective of whether you clear or not uh however if you take a lot of leaves so for your ca final examination it might extend a bit but uh, it will not extend beyond 3 years trust me so it's just going to be 3 years that will not extend then the final question we have in the chat box uh, is bcom better for ca or bcom honors uh i would say it does not make much of a difference as i was mentioning ca will overpower or rather overshadow the other degrees so i would say you go for something which is easier and you choose a bcom all right one more would ca be advisable for someone looking to pursue a career in finance or are there better options uh honestly i feel that yes ca is a very good option for someone uh, looking for a career in finance because it builds up a very good base for you so after you do see uh, ca you can easily uh, do a cfa to de- develop that finance career or you can do an mba or in fact i have even seen only cas get into finance it is very much possible so it uh, it is it builds a very good base for you so depending on the subject you are more interested in you can uh, choose uh, to focus more on that during your ca but yes ca is advisable if you want to do build a career in finance uh so is there anyone else who wants to ask questions you can either put it on the chat box or you can unmute and ask also i'm just putting in my email id so anyone who has questions after this session needs any other guidance on the course on the studies or uh, to get into any kind of firms you all can reach out to me on my email id i'm just putting it on the chat box Sorry, I need a spelling So if there's uh, no one, we can end the session here. Uh, thank you I'm so sorry, much for joining us. I'm sorry, I consumed a little bit more of your time than was, was very uh, expected. Insightful. It was very insightful, very knowledgeable, really. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, right, last good colleges. Okay, uh, good colleges. Uh, I would say if you want one where you can have a college life, uh, Narsi Monji College, Mithibai College, these are good colleges. uh if you want ones where you do not have to attend college uh, hr college is famous for that one right okay uh so thank you so much again uh okay. it, it was it provided us with great clarity definitely so thank you you're welcome it is uh, i'm very grateful that i got a chance to interact with all of you thank you so much